everybody and welcome to joy has questions so to everyone who is subscribed to me i am so sorry for the delay the inconsistency in terms of me putting out my videos i'm going to just come out with it um i wasn't prepared for um the interactions necessarily that I would receive on social media or on my YouTube channel. It definitely is not an excuse, but I just needed to take some time away um, because whereas on my Instagram page, Joy Has Questions, it was more so like networking, um, collaborating with different brands, you know, or speaking the same language I'm speaking in terms of black empowerment, woman empowerment, people of color empowerment, LGBTQ, you know, uh, empowerment. YouTube is a completely different beast, a completely different monster, and it actually was at times like triggering my own anxiety disorder as well as triggering, you know, some key things with my um, insecurities just based on the fact that for every like, you know, comment that I have of accommodation and comment of like, girl, you're doing this, you're an educated black queen, I like the fact that you're witty. Um, it was an equal reaction of you know at times people saying like really vicious things or I would make a statement and like people go like on a whole tangent tirade about how I was like a cunt bitch from hell and you know at times some days you can deal with it other days you cannot and even if it was somebody that was trolling me obviously had negative five followers clearly lives in somebody's you know Catskill Mountains or under a rock um, and I'm not saying Catskill in terms of white people. I'm saying, like, just some place that ain't nobody checking for. No one's been ever like, you know what? I'm going to take a, a vacation. i really been wanting to see, like, what the Appalachian Mountain Range looks like. No one says that. So, at the end of the day, I just was really um, bothered at times by some of the statements or just people's inability to critically think. Um, that is something that is totally missing within the human species. And that's something that technology has taken away from us the ability to do. Social media has greatly impacted just common sense. It's like a combat every time when you go on social media between the common sense that your praying grandmother tried to give you and just whatever the bullshit is on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. Um, and that's something that I wanted my page to be the antithesis for or to serve as a difference. I'm not trying to do like an insta blog and get on. Clearly as you see me on here, I'm never talking about waist trainers or fit tea or my bundles or this new bomb matte lip color. Even though let let me just say this ladies, this is really cheap. Y'all need to stop playing NYX. Like y'all just have to. Because NYX might be cheap like wet and wild, but they have some really good affordable stuff. You can't we all can't go to All-Star Weekend like today, guys, and get a baller to buy the entire Mac and NARS collection. Some of us just have to rely on, you know, like our thought processes and, you know, working and doing something more than just being like, oh, I'm cute and my frontal is pretty. Buy this. Yeah, we just, it, we all can't live our lives like that. For me, being on a budget, <laughs> NYX. But... I say that to say it just um, was something that I honestly had to pray on and just think about um, in terms of going forward. So today on February 19th, 526 p.m. in Chicago, Illinois, I am making the commitment that I'm going to be consistent with my videos no matter what because this is a prayer that I told Ja at the beginning of this year. Whatever you want this journey to be in terms of the changing, changing world of journalism and how you see me fitting into it and getting the message out there and being an artivist or an activist that is doing that by incorporating the arts, then that is what I'm going to do. And at the end of the day, you can say whatever you like, and I have to keep this to myself, but anyone can say whatever they want in terms of the reasons why, you know, they feel the way that they feel about me and my page. But it takes courage to step onto a public platform. I have 505 subscribers. And maybe if not everyone has been like, girl, she's been taking too long. I'm out for this piece. But I have a significant amount of subscribers to me. You want to know why? Because this is a prayer I told Jod that I was going to do this in a month's time. And look, I'm already at this, you know, platform. So I take this very seriously. And I don't look at this like, oh, man, you just out here just trying to, you know, make a quick buck. No, I'm trying to educate through the format that people gravitate towards now. If people did, were still reading newspapers, I would be writing a column. If people still were watching the news, I would be on Channel 7. Like, this isn't me just trying to do something for sensationalism. So, I really just had to have that come to Jesus moment and understand, you know, get a tougher skin. Because when you offer yourself up to the public, you do, you know, 
offer yourself up to their criticism. Not everyone understands my jokes, my sense of humor. Not everyone is as educated in, you know, book smarts as well as just common sense. And sometimes that shows in the comments that I see people make are just completely lacking motor skills. Like, it amazes me. It really, it really... It really does amaze me. Um, so I say that to say thank you for being patient with me. And we're going to jump. I'm going to treat this as like a quick recap. Um, so we're just going to jump right into it. Um, I know a couple weeks ago I said I was going to talk about my weight loss journey. I have been so focused. I just haven't had time to think straight. I am 14 pounds down. And I'm at the point now when I look at the scale, I'm starting to question if the scale is correct. Which is another thing that ladies, gentlemen, if you're on like any sort of weight loss journey... If you're doing that, then that's a key sign that you are not trusting, um, that you are putting in a work, and that means that you're not giving yourself enough grace. I have worked my ass off. I have withstood all the peach cobbler, all the fried okra. My cousin about to fry some now, and you know what my black ass is about to be eating? I'm about to eat polenta and like broccoli and a stir fry veggie mix. And sprinkle some liquid aminos on there and call it a black ass day. Like, I have been putting in the work. So for me to get on the scale and now be like, of course the batteries must be out. There ain't no way I'm 168. No! Joy is 168 and I'm going to celebrate it. I'm super happy about it. I have definitely been putting in the work. So to everyone, you know, who has been following my weight loss journey, I'm, I'm slowly getting more comfortable to where I'm going to do like the side by side picture, but I still don't feel like I'm there yet. But even now looking in the video, like I can see like my face is thinning out. Um, and I'm not trying to do like the, you know, look, but I'm just saying like, everyone always says you lose weight first and foremost in your face. And I, I can even see it. I'm like, okay, this triple chin is going to like maybe a little bit of like one and a half chin. So we're just going to keep going with it. And if nothing else, let me tell you something. With all the stress that we have going on in this world, I find that I'm finally in a space where it's the one thing that I can guarantee. The commitment to myself and to my temple and to my body is something that I'm really, really excited about because it, it's a confidence that I've never honestly had in myself. Um, so the fact that I now I'm in a space where I'm like, you know what? I'm about to run this block. And no one's going to tell me otherwise. And I'm very, very proud of myself. So for everyone who has like had questions or asked me about it, thank you very much. It's greatly appreciated. Um, so I'll let you know like where I'm sitting now. The only thing I will say this, as you all can clearly tell, I'm a confident woman in the sense of like body confidence when it comes to like certain body parts. Like it's genetics. This is a tank top. I can I can do this all day. And this is a tight tank top and it's still just gonna drop down. It's genetics. My parents have or my mother's side of the family is a very big busted bunch of southern praying Baptist Arkansas women. It just it is what it is. I can't do anything to help it or fight it. So with that being said, my boobs are getting smaller. And I don't know if this is a good thing or a bad thing. I feel like the best size my breasts ever were were like a C cup because they were like cutesy and I could still wear like fun tops and they didn't like just warble all over the place like they were dancing to their own personal yin yang song. But now I'm kind of like I've gotten accustomed to them just being like D's and big and and now it's just I'm kind of like wait I'm putting bras I never used to fit before or that I haven't been able to fit in a really long time and I don't know how to necessarily feel about it. So, I'll keep you all posted. If you all have any questions in terms of like what my eating regimen is, um, feel free. In all of my videos, I put my contact info, which is my email. And I'm pretty good about doing that. David Zulu, I know I actually have to respond to you. You asked me something about music. So, sorry, I've just been working on a lot of projects. My bad. Um, other than that, moving right along. In terms of like this week in number 45 in the fight to stay alive, um, I really don't have too much to say. Uh, just because I'm just proud to see everyone continuing to ignore him and keep it moving. If anyone has not seen I Am Not Your Negro, I implore you. I implore you, I implore you, I implore you. You've got to go see it. You've got to go. It is one of the best movies you've ever seen. And look at the amount of stunned white people that will be there with you. It's a great opportunity to actually be cohesive and to have those hard conversations because you have to think about it. You didn't come into a movie talking about I'm about to see Fast and Furious 28 and The Rock is going to be like skydiving off of Fuji Mountain in Japan in a Corvette. Like, 
you knew the shit you were getting into when you bought the ticket. So it definitely opens you up to have like very honest race relations conversation, class relation conversations within this country with people of the, you know, opposite racial groups that you wouldn't necessarily do that with because the sad thing is in being a race-based country like America, we're always making assumptions about one another. It, it's what we do. And, and that's why we're more divisive than ever because the jig is up and everyone sees it. But if you want to have a bomb-ass sip tea and let's talk about the real, go see I Am Not Your Negro. There's a section where James Baldwin explains like the concept of the word nigger and how if white people are the ones that invented the words and it's projection about how they feel about themselves, not actually people of color. My lip gloss dropped. Like it was fun. It was just like, I can't take this. It's too much. So I really, really enjoyed that. I think you all could tell the sun just went down. I see like level changes in the video. Sorry. Um, also, I promise you all I'm going to get the camera set up. I've just been super, it's been a combination of me being lazy slash scared as fuck because this camera and all the equipment and additives that came with it totaled me to like 3,000. And if I mess this up, mm, I will kill someone. So I want to make sure I have all my ducks in a row because I'm not like at times the most technically proficient person. Sorry. Um, and then last but like me, not least, what I have got to got to discuss I had to take three full, like, deep bosom inhalations of my inhaler because I, I was high on, like, vegan cheesecake when I heard this because it was, like, the one tweet I allowed to myself in the past couple of weeks. And I'm scrolling through the interweb, and then I see James Earl Jones. Now, my heart instantly went into, oh, God, not him, too. Because I knew about this live action remake that was being done of The Lion King like earlier last year when it first popped out. And I was like, this is my favorite Disney movie. If you fuck this up, I will kill you. But then to see that he signed on to be Mufasa again. I'm saying, I don't give a damn about your kids. I don't care about your baby mama's kids, your wife's and fathers, mothers, husband, brother, son, sister, lover, homie, friends. I don't care about nobody's children. I don't even care about adults. This is one of the best Disney movies ever. And to be done by um, John Favreau, I don't know if I pronounced his name correctly, but he is the director that did the live action Jungle Book, which was fucking phenomenal. So at the end of the day, when I tell you I'm about to be sitting here getting all of my circle of life, because let's keep it real, the Lion King is like the original story of a fuck boy that gets his life together. Simba had all the keys, then he gets all emotional and keeps making excuses for why he refuses to be in a man. Nala is the one girl trying to hold him down, trying to encourage him. He still is giving her hell and not wanting to listen, so she has to make a black girl magic decision and say, you know what, I'm not dealing with your fuck I'm going the fuck back home to make moves on my own because I can't rely on you. And then he finally comes to terms with the fact that, you know what? I am not all that I need to be and I need to be doing better. It literally is the story of the prodigal son returns and gets his life together and stops dicking around. Also, if you hear sirens going off, sorry. No, it's not some Chicago shit. I live by a hospital, so, mm. Um, but yeah, I just am so ready for this movie. And then to have Donald Glover playing Simba, I, mm. And you know he can sing. You know he's gonna sing. Like, I just, it, honestly, if they bring back Jeremy Irons as Scar, they have to, because Jeremy Irons is Scar. Like, they've got to sign him on. And if you can sign on James Earl Jones, you can sign on Jeremy Irons. And the sad thing is, Sarabi, and this is a little black known fact, but Sarabi is also the wife of King Joffy from Coming to America. Tragically, she's died. But, or died. Lord, girl, can we get grammar? She's dead. Rest in peace. But kudos to the casting so far. I cannot wait for this movie. I will sacrifice Taylor Swift to the gods, and Jennifer Lawrence can go right there with her if it means that this movie comes out faster. I'll steal a lock of her hair and do whatever I need to do to get this pushed out into theaters because I am here for it. Um, that's pretty much everything that's been going on with me. Be sure to follow Joy Has Questions on IG. That's where I do like a lot of more of my like short little witty quips about like commentaries on social, political, economic bullshit that's happening around the world, as well as celebrating people of color who are doing bomb stuff. 
Um, so follow me there. Be sure to contact me as well. And I will catch you all later on this week talking about whatever it is in the world that is of interest to me. And that's of interest to you. Bye, guys.